Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Dylan Smith and I'm a senior manufacturing specialist here in the Birmingham Technology Centre. Today I'm going to be giving you a very high level overview and introduction into exactly what feeds and speeds are. So to begin with we're going to be looking at uh, exactly what are feeds and speeds, then we'll be looking at why it's so important to get these values right and the effects if we don't get them right. And finally, we'll be looking at how you can set your own feeds and speeds value and where we can find that information. Okay, so exactly what are feeds and speeds? So when we're referring to speed, what we're referring to is surface speed, which is given to us in meters per minute. Surface speed is then converted into RPM, which gives us the S code to run on our machine. So that gives us the RPM at which our tool is going to spin up at. RPM stands for revolutions per minute uh, and as an example of what RPM is if our milling tool turns um, once every second our tool is running at 60 RPM. Turning is exactly the opposite so it's our workpiece which is turning and our cutting tool is remaining stationary but it's exactly the same concept. So inside of Fusion we have our main spindle speed. We also have a ramp spindle speed as well. It's quite common to have a different ramp spindle speed to our main cutting spindle speed. A different style of cut will mean optimal spindle speeds will differ for both operations, ramping and normal cutting. So as an example, we may want a faster spindle speed for ramping in, but this spindle speed isn't the best option for our cutting spindle speed as it may burn out our tool too quickly or it may provide an undesired surface finish. So when we're talking about feed rate, we're talking about how far our cutting tool will move every single minute. This expression is described as millimeters per minute. And similar to spindle speed, we have different cutting feed rates for different parts of the tool path. What we'll do, we'll jump into Fusion to show you exactly what all these different parts are and the benefits of changing the feed rate for each one. We have cutting feed rate. Our cutting feed rate will take effect when the tool is travelling on the blue strands of toolpath. These are our cutting moves. We have our lead in and lead out feed rates. These are the green sections of toolpath. The feed rate these are set to may differ from your cutting feed rate. As an example, we might be machining a tough material and we're slightly worried about chipping or breaking our tool upon entry, so we slow it down with the lead moves. We also have our ramping feed rate, the red coloured toolpath. Again, similar situation to lead in and lead out feed rates. We may slow it down for this move because it's more aggressive and it may damage our cutting tool. The options for different feed rates are all there so you can make your toolpath as efficient as possible. The feed we set for our ramping may be slower than our cutting feed rate. If we have them as the same value, we may lose valuable cycle time. And finally, we have our plunge feed rate. This feed rate determines how fast our tool moves vertically through the air, except in the case of drilling, where this value determines the feed rate at which we drill. So why are they so important then? Well, firstly, they greatly influence our tool life. Effects of bad feeds and speeds won't be as apparent on softer materials, such as aluminiums or resins, as much as they are with harder materials. Because we've got a wider range, we've got more room for error. But if we look at materials such as titanium or Inconel, we've got a much tighter range and less room for error. And if we do get it slightly wrong, we know about it more because our tool breaks quicker. Next, of course, they greatly affect the way our surface finish comes out. If we don't marry up our feeds and speeds correctly, then we will not get the desired results. If we run our feed rate too fast or our spindle speed too fast, we end up with chatter marks on the surface. Uh, and finally, of course, we've got material removal rate. Often people won't understand the potential of the cutting tool that they're using because they never explore it through the manufacturer's manuals. Um, you may be running your cutting tool 30% underneath its potential, and what you're doing there is you're losing valuable cycle time and money. So it's always important to see how far you can push them cutting tools. So finally, how do we go about setting these values? When we're setting our feeds and speeds parameters, we can do this via operation. We can input individual values into each toolpath if we like. A more efficient way to do this is to use the cutting data tab inside of the tool library. 
we can store presets here to automate the input of our feeds and speeds. For instance, if I use this tool on a few different materials and use it for different operations, such as roughing and finishing, I can create a list of all the different scenarios this tool is used in. Then, when it comes to choosing the parameters, I simply select the desired one from the drop-down list. So for milling, first we need to identify what tool we're using. If you know the make and model of the tool, the manufacturer should provide the surface speed. The surface speed will be dependent on what material the tool is, what material we're cutting, and what kind of operation we're performing with that tool. The manufacturer will provide a recommended surface speed. We can then input this into Fusion and it will give us an RPM. It's important to remember there are other variables involved. Are we using coolant? How far is our tool sticking out? Is our work holding rigid? All these factors can come into consideration when setting our feeds and speeds. Our feed rate will be determined by our recommended feed per tooth, the amount of cutting edges on our tool, and the RPM we're using. Again, this information should be given by the tool manufacturer. Once we've inputted our tool data and appropriate RPM into Fusion, we then put in our feed per tooth and it gives us a cutting feed rate value. This is the F code used on our machine.